Hi, this is Mike Megali and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation presenting case 28 for the manual of non-CTO coronary interventions. This is a case of ad hoc left main standing. The patient was a middle-aged woman with progressive exertional dyspnea and a positive stress test for ischemia in the inferior lateral wall. She had a normal baseline LV function, but had also diabetes, dyslipidemia, hypertension, and morbid obesity. Diagnostic coronary angiography demonstrated a severe lesion in the first obtuse marginal branch. There was no significant disease into the LAD or the right coronary artery. However, in different views, there appeared to be a lesion in the ostium of the left main. So in order to further assess that lesion, we performed intravascular ultrasound, and we did find the minimum lumen area at the ostium of the left main to be 5.6 mm square, which is below the cutoff of 6 mm square, commonly used for determining the significance of uh, left main stenosis. So the next question is, should this patient undergo PCI or coronary bypass graft surgery? The arguments in favor of PCI are that she has two fairly focal lesions. They are both uh, very treatable with PCI. The OM has no major branch. The left main is an ostia lesion, which is easier to treat than distal bifurcation lesions. The downsides are that she does have uh, diabetes but also she has morbid obesity, which might create issues with coronary bypass graft surgery. Based on this and based on previous conversations and conversations with the patient, it was decided to perform PCI. The OM lesion was first successfully stented and post dilated. And then um, a nice result was achieved in the circumflex. And then the left main was predilated we had already done intravascular ultrasound that showed mild calcification. And then a 3O by 12 millimeter stent was placed uh, all the way from the proximal left main all the way into the aorta. We made sure that we did not uh, cover the distal bifurcation. And that provided a nice result with uh, Timothy flow in both LAD and circumflex. Like we do for all left main interventions, we perform intravascular ultrasound, and this confirmed that there was a good stent expansion, but also that the stent was protruding essentially all the way into the into the aorta. We see flow on both sides of the stent struts. Then, in order to facilitate re-engagement of the left main, in case the patient would require in the future another procedure, we performed inflation with an osteal flash balloon, which uh, what it does is it flares the proximal struts of the stand and therefore facilitates expansion. And after doing that, a nice result was achieved with Timothy flow in uh, the LED and the circumflex. Now, I will be the first one to say that in the vast majority of cases, cases, ad hoc left main PCI should not be done. It's best to take the patient off the table and actually have a discussion with the patient, have them visit with the surgeon uh, to make an informed decision. But in potentially rare cases like this one, when it's a simple left main disease, no left main bifurcation, um, low syntax score in a patient with potentially difficulties for surgery, such as um, weight, uh, doing ad hoc left main PCI is reasonable, and the patient did have a good outcome acutely and during short term follow up. Whenever left main PCI is done, intravascular ultrasound is very important or any form of imaging to confirm, first of all, the severity of the stenosis, but also to optimize the PCI result. In this particular case, it did confirm that we covered the ostium of the left main, having some stent struts protruding into the aorta. And finally, in uh, Osteal, aorto osteal um, stenting, performing inflation with the osteal flash balloon, can flare the stent struts and facilitate re engagement should the patient require it in the future. Thank you.